Greetings and welcome back to Star Drive 2. So the last playthrough didn't really go as well as I had hoped. Playing as the Optiris Hive is somewhat challenging, simply because of this cybernetic trait that they have. It makes you rely on production for pretty much everything. And I think it's kind of difficult, especially if you don't know all the mechanics of the game yet. So in the meantime, I've been playing with the Cordrazine Collective, and this playthrough has been going a lot better than uh, the one that you saw. So, now I will start a new one with the Cordrazine Collective. The nice thing about all of this is that many, uh, well, all the ship designs that you make are carried over to uh, other playthroughs. So, now I will be able to use some of the ship designs that I've been building in my uh, different playthrough. So, that's all very good. Let us continue. As for the system size, oh no, well, galaxy size, I will be putting it to 50 and I will again use the spiral galaxy because I think it is uh, the nicest one of the three. I will keep it at 5 opponents and I will put the hostile threats to minimal. There will still be plenty of hostile threats even at minimal, so that's not really too much of a problem. I don't want to disable it completely, so. This will be it. Let us continue. Right, so let's take a look at what we have. We are starting off in a decent system, I'd say. We have three habitable planets, so that's very good. And we are at around here in the galaxy. The galaxy pretty much always looks the same, I've found out. The layout is almost always the same, however the uh, systems and planets will be very different. So, let's see how we can start properly this time. We have a uh, exploration frigate and a colony ship as usual. And I will need to go and find out if I can find a decent planet, preferably another Terran planet. So let us... I guess I'm gonna be exploring uh, these five systems. So let's start off with this one. I'll keep my, my colony ship over here. Also, we should be doing some uh, research. And I guess I'll be going with the Xenomine for now. I think it is the best one. Uh, better than the automated rover bay. So, at least it worked out in my other playthrough. So, it should work for now. There's nothing much else. To oh. Wait, there is. I just wasted a few turns, so I should be putting in the trade goods over here, and I should be making some ships. So, let's make uh, one of these, the Death Owl. It's a very basic cruiser, but it works. It's actually a decent design, I must say. Alright, so we got this one scouted. It's got a huge planet, but it's very poor, so... That's not really what I wanted. Let's in the meantime explore this anomaly. It's probably gonna be a... I don't know, an asteroid or a derelict ter ship. We'll have to wait and see. What do we got? The infested derelict. Alright. We will uh, come back later. Oh crap, and we have a uh, wormhole. That could be problematic. In the meantime, we've also explored this system. It's not all that great, it seems. Let's go on to this one. In the meantime, the dead owl is building and the Xenomine is being researched. I'm gonna be going a bit faster through these uh, beginning stages than I did the last time. Oh, and we got another wormhole. Now, it would be awesome if these two linked up. That would mean that they don't link up to some place else, which could lead to an easy invasion. So, yeah. I'm not gonna test it out just yet, because I don't want to discover other races too soon. And now, well, it almost looked promising, but uh, unfortunately these are gas giants, so very much useless. Okay, and we have a I guess this isn't a bad system, uh, a bad uh, planet. It does, it is ultra rich, so that is decent. Let's go on to this one. 
and we now have a dead owl. That's good. The next construction should be... Let's start off... No, let's make another dead owl. I prefer to have two ships. Because eventually uh, a raider will approach. And I prefer to have at least two ships. What do we got here? Medium edit. Well, it's not that bad. And it does have limba seeds, which uh, are pretty valuable. Okay. Now let's check out this one. And then we should be able to make a decision about where to settle. Also, I could just settle in my own system. This one isn't too bad. It is huge and rich. And here we have a asteroid and a medium barren poor planet. So, which one do... Oh, and I guess I missed an anomaly. Let's go and check it out. This one is tempting. I don't really see all that many... Well, I guess there are a few of these resources. So what does this do? A discount on a rushing construction. That's interesting. We have some Bakta route back here for more approval and nothing down here and also nothing in our own system uh, you know what I guess I'm just gonna colonize this one it's not that great but it is close by where did I put my colony ship oh I send it off with my uh, exploration frigate alright well let's send them back Let's send the colony ship straight towards this planet. So it isn't the greatest start of all, but still, things may evolve and you never really know what will happen. We have another dead hole and again, uh, the music from all of this is uh, still very loud. I can't seem to fix it in any way. So yes, we'll just have to live with that for uh, the time being. Uh, this is the exploration frigate, so seeing as we have extended all the way up here, I guess I could move the frigate uh, to explore this system now, so that's good. We have two ships. Now, what do we produce? Well, let's uh, build a Xenomine. That'll be good. And we also need some research, right. So one thing that I very much liked about the research is that you have the choice for the astrometrics lab, which is actually very good. It uh, is a module for your ship and it adds plus five research per turn, which is actually pretty decent because you can, let's take a look if I can find my ship that I made. Uh, we have a cruiser, uh, which one is it? Science cruiser. This was the one I made in my other playthrough. And as you can see, it has two astrometrics labs, which means this cruiser generates 10 research per turn, which is pretty good. And it also has some simple weaponry. And I uh, settle, well, I put these ships into orbit around my planets, and that way they don't take up all that many command points. So they pretty much do two things. They make it well, they do many things actually. They make it so that you have quite a bit of research. They do also act as a bit of a last line of defense in case things get really serious. And it also makes it so that you have uh, freed up a lot of people to go do some other things. So you, I will be needing, well, I guess I won't be using any scientists at all and I'll be putting them all as workers and farmers. So that should actually be very good. Now, what do I research? I guess I guess I could go for it, but yeah, let's just do astrometric slab. It'll be good. In the meantime, I should be getting a lot more. Well, maybe not yet, but uh, I should be getting a lot more production soon enough. What if I put this one down here? No, it won't do all that much. Okay, so that's fine. I'm also going to be needing some freighters because I'm guessing that there won't be... No, we won't be getting any food here, so 
Let's actually build a freighter first. It should be fairly cheap. Seven turns. It's actually quite a lot, but still. Yeah, these guys are starving now. So that's not good. Um, minus zero point. No farming. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of an issue. I should have anticipated this, but uh, we will be getting a freighter which should allow us to ship some food over to uh, Cordron 2. Just hope they survive. It is difficult to see because there are no numbers on this. And here we can hire a hero. So what can he do? You have a unique ship, electronics warfare expert. That's... I'm not sure if I really want you. No, I'm gonna reject for now. <laughs> what a noob. Yeah, well... I can still hire him for 30 turns, so that's not too bad. Now I just need this freighter fleet to be finished before these guys starve. This may be tricky. Maybe I can rush it. Yeah, let's rush it. It only costs me... Uh, 20 currency. Okay, so that should now fix this problem. Good. Alright, back to the casino mine. And we have one food holder. And we have two combat ships. Oh, right, we got the explorer. Let's send them off to uh, this system. I'm gonna send them over here for uh, three turns. Oh, right, and I haven't uh, looked at this anomaly yet. Oh, this one isn't very interesting. Although it does have trilithium. Which I guess is somewhat good. But then again, trilithium... If I can't find three more of this, then this is pretty much useless. Because you need four resources before you can actually get something from it. Uh, I think this system is a little bit too far away for now. So let's send our ship back to our capital to refuel and then I can send him to this area perhaps actually in the meantime go and check out this anomaly oh and we have some uh, red crystal spotted that's not good well, they, they aren't attacking yet, but I do have two ships. I should be able to defeat them. And once the Xeno mine is completed, I should be having a lot more production, which should also allow me to build my ships a lot faster. So here we have the asteroid. Okay, well, let's dispatch a science team. There we go. Now let's send our explorer back. After the astrometrics, I will be putting a research into the asteroid. There we go. Now we can send... Oh, right. And I'm not constructing anything down here. That's really a waste. I'm uh, wasting a bit of production here. As you can see, at least uh, one currency per turn I would have gained from this. So it's not a disaster, but it certainly isn't ideal. I should have been building a production Xeno mine down here as well. Okay. I'm actually getting a lot of production from this. I do get a gravity penalty. But the planet is very rich. So that's very good. And we have the Astrometrics Lab. Excellent. Now, as for the next research, we will be putting some in the asteroid for now, because I want to see what it will bring. Although I guess it's kind of useless if I am not willing to sacrifice any population. So, I'm actually going to leave it for now. Because it's going to ask me to sacrifice some population to uh, do some tests. And that will lower my approval, and it will also... Oh yeah, take away two citizens, so that's not very ideal for now. So let's focus on something else. I 
I think I might go for for a soil enrichment or plasma fuel cells for some more fuel. Let's go with soil enrichment first. All right. All right. Now we have a casino mine. We should be getting a whole bunch of production from here. So that's very good. Now, what do I build next? I'd really like a... Apparently I can't build my sign ship yet. Uh, what do I need for it? I kind of forgot. Where is my science cruiser? Right here. Apparently I should be able to build it. Maybe I looked over it. I equipped it with all the basic stuff plus a astrometrics lab, so it should... I should be able to build it. Apparently I can't. I guess I gotta put it in the roster. Oh, no, not there. Uh, over here. Which one was this? I guess the uh, small corvette. Yeah, okay. So yeah, um, when you make ships in the game that you play in, then they automatically get put in the roster. Unless the roster is full, I suppose. But I guess I gotta put them in manually now, because... I didn't make them in this game. So... Now I should be able to make a... Science vessel. But I kinda think I wanna make another dead hole first. Because those... Um, those crystalline entities will arrive with probably two... Crystals, so... I wanna have three ships, so that I can defend properly. In the meantime, let's send... This should be the explorer, okay. Let's send this one off... Over here. Still no alien contact. I guess that's a good thing. Once I have three dead owls, I think I'll be building the science cruiser. That'll give me a big bump in my... Is this a Terran world? Oh no, it's a desert. Okay. Underground ocean. What does that do? Gain 10... Oh no, wait. Um, plus one food per farmer. That's nice. That could be a good farming world. Though then again, it is a desert, so... <laughs> that's not ideal. Now, he still has a lot of fuel. I guess I could send him straight over here. We also got an anomaly over there. I guess this is where the crystals will come from. It kind of looks similar as in the last game. So I have to keep an eye on that. We have another dead hole. Excellent. We now got three ships. And... The science cruiser will take a long time. 29 turns, but... It should be useful. Plus 10 signs and then once that one is done I can actually get rid of these uh, three uh, these two scientists because they only bring in three and well that's not very much for example if I were to put these guys in production actually that would be a good idea I think let's see so it would take me 29 turns to complete the science cruiser this way and 18 turns to get soil enrichment I think they will contribute a lot more in over here. So if I can get a science cruiser in 16 turns, that'll give me a big bump in my research and I should be able to uh, complete soil, soil enrichments pretty fast. So let's go and do that. Oh, there we go. We got a bunch of crystals too, as I suspected. Let's get our fleet <laughs> to go attack them. Oh, and it seems like this one connects here. Okay, that's kind of alright. So this one isn't an issue. This one, however, may connect to something else. <laughs> so, yeah, we could still get invasions from this side. Now, what is this system about? It, it doesn't look bad. It has a tree habitable 
uh, planets, I suppose. Though, well, this is a murder belt. Well, that sounds very promising. Ultra rich, that's all very good. Abundant, rich. So, yeah, I certainly want to get this system eventually. It'll all depend on where the enemy is. I'm gonna. I'm not sure if he'll have enough fuel to reach over here. I'm gonna try it anyway. So, let's go with three turns. Right there. And there we go. Let us fight. So, we got three dead owls. I'm gonna put them in a formation like this, so that hopefully uh, these guys can flank. Still, it's gonna be tricky. These guys are very fast, as you can see. Also, the one thing I like about the Cordrazine is that I... Well, I like their ship models. They are very... Interesting, I suppose. I'll just have to wait out to see how this plays out. Now they are focusing on this one. Hopefully it can hold on. Uh, if these guys do a sharp turn, they should be able to be hit by the... Oh no, they are turning the other way. Oh crap, that was fast. I gotta focus fire on this one. Okay, so that may have been a bad decision. None of these have been hit by anything yet. Problem is that they are so fast. And why aren't you getting any closer? Okay, so this is very bad. Huh. This went a lot different last time. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> uh, let's see. For some reason the... The missiles did not connect. They missed their targets way too often. So, yeah, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. Um, wow. Kind of surprised about that. So... Yeah, I guess I certainly shouldn't have shouldn't have spread out my ships like that. Okay, we're gonna need some new ships. Can I rush this one? Although one ship will barely help me in any way. But if they do go for the capital back here, I can defend. They're going straight for the capital, okay. Well, I can rush this Death Owl. It's gonna cost me quite a bit of money. We're getting very close now. We got one ship. Let's make sure it is assigned to the planet. Not sure if I can rush another one, if I have enough money. Ah, oh, crap. So, yeah, okay. Let's do a last defense. We got one death owl and a star base, which is actually uh, reasonably capable. But let's just keep it close to the star base and let's see what happens. Normally we should be able to defend against these guys. So we went really wrong last time. Now these ones should be able to hit him straight on. Okay, that's one down. This one shouldn't last too long. Of course they do. Yeah, okay, so they killed my dead all, but this one should be down pretty soon. My uh, station should be in decent condition. Alright, so there we go. We at least uh, won that fight. <laughs> Let's finish. So yeah, that certainly went very different than in my own playthrough. I'm not even sure if I fought against... Yes, and the plot thickens. 
not even sure if I fought against crystals in my other playthrough, but well, we have now. And I know I fought against crystals in the other YouTube playthrough, but not on the one that I'm playing on my own. So in the meantime, let's. Uh, well, yeah, let's get another dead owl, and then we do the science cruiser. Oh, we got a lot of money, apparently. I didn't really read uh, the whole message. That's good. Alright, we got one dead owl. I'm gonna keep him near the system. Now we just gotta wait until... Well, I guess this Xenowine is gonna be finished right now. Yeah, that's good. We get a, a decent amount of production from all of this. Now I can queue up a dead owl over here. Now we wait for the science cruiser to be finished. And then we have a whole bunch of research, which is very good. I might fall behind in the research a little bit early on. But I should be catching up pretty soon once I get everything going. There we go, now we get 10 research, as you can see soil enrichment will be done very fast now. So, what's up next? Let's get... I'd like another colony ship, but for now I think I should be looking at some defenses, so... A broadside would actually be not that expensive. Yeah, let's get a broadside going. A cruiser to make sure we have some uh, more better defense. And this is another dead owl. Let's send him over to the capital. And we also still have the science cruiser, which is at least somewhat decent. It isn't heavily armored, but it uh, does have some weapons. And as I said, it's useful in a last ditch effort to defend your planet. Now we gotta build something down here. I guess I could see infantry base. It'd take me 19 turns, that's quite a lot. So let's build another dead owl because that seems like the best choice for now. I gotta build up a decent fleet so that I can defend somewhat. Okay, and now we have soil enrichment, which means we should be getting a lot more. Uh, food from farms. Oh no, wait, not yet. I gotta build the soil enrichment first, so uh, this shouldn't take too long, I think. 15 turns. That's quite a lot. Let's queue up another death owl after this broadside, and then we can do soil enrichment. This should allow me to put a few more farmers into uh, production. Which means I can push out another science cruiser soon enough. Now, what do we need next? I think I might go for... Hmm. VR network. I will be needing this eventually. It'll give me more colony approval, which also will allow you to get more production because... Let's see... As you can see, uh, the people are unhappy here, and I'm losing production because of this. If I were to improve happiness, I would be gaining more production. So, that's also one way of doing things. Yeah, let's get the VR network. I'm also going to be needing some more colony ships. Oh, and who do you have? A uh, hero, labor leader. Oh, that's very interesting. I'm gonna be hiring him. He does cost me a three per turn, but he will pay off. Not even sure what sort of race he's supposed to be. I guess I could have uh, seen it if I read the message, but let's put him in as a leader down here. In one turn he'll be here and we should be seeing a big boost in production, as you can see. So that worked out very well. And this production counts for all these systems, uh, all these uh, planets in one system. So we can put a leader in every system. So that's very good. I'm glad I uh, 
got that hero because I do need production early on because I want to get a decent fleet okay we are making a dead owl here we are not doing anything back here but I could queue up a star base for some more defenses it's actually gonna be 28 turns which is quite a lot but no you know what let's get another dead owl because I'm gonna need a uh, strong early fleet and even though those uh, those ships aren't exactly that strong but still it's early game with a few of those I should be uh, in a decent position to defend and if you keep your ships around planets they are garrisoned and they don't count as uh, that much uh, fleet points command points anymore so you can have a decent defense fleet but once you attack Either uh, you have to attack with a very uh, elite force so that you basically cram all the best modules in your ships so that you get a lot more uh, a lot more force for the amount of command points that you spend or you simply well make uh, some cheaper ships and you send them off but then you will be over your command points limit and you will be paying a lot of extra upkeep for all of that so that's uh, the sort of choices you have to make. I'm not sure what I'll be doing. It all pretty much depends on how things evolve. Another Death Owl. The uh, fleet is getting bigger, which is good. We also have one freighter left. I could move someone to the other planet for some more production. I might actually do that. Let's send over a farmer to go produce over there. Now let's hope we don't have starvation. No, apparently not. Okay, that's good. Now we have two people here. A lot more production and that means I can queue up the starbase. 19 turns. What about a freighter? Okay, let's get another freighter going first. What about the colony ship? So much stuff to build. All right. <laughs> I guess after soil enrichment here I can queue up a colony ship and we have the VR network good so what's up next kind of thinking I guess I'll go with plasma fuel cells I do enjoy having more fuel capacity because well, if your fuel cells are better, it also means that you have to put less fuel cells uh, on your ships. Which makes sense, but... Um, I could also go for one of these Xenopsychology I usually like, because it does give you more approval with every empire. So it's it's always useful, no matter what. The cloning center is also kind of useless, uh, useful, especially with my race because I do have a. Uh, I am slow breeders, so that means that I don't. Well, obviously, I don't breed that fast, so I do like having a cloning uh, building on one of my bigger systems, one of my bigger planets, so that I can basically. Uh, use it to ship out people because many of these systems. Many of the planets are barren. Uh, this one is actually decent. This one has zero food per farmer. And this one, for example. So, uh, a lot of planets are barren. And without any aeroponics farms, you can't really produce any food there. So, yeah, well, then again, food on its own does not really have much to do with the reproduction. Uh, you just need enough food so that they can all survive and reproduction for example here we have a base growth rate and a uh, minus 50 percent racial modifier if we were to look at this one we have the uh, base growth rate which is a lot less and then we have the modifier again normally the approval also counts but i think it's at about average so the approval neither gives me buffs or debuffs will be 
we'll be able to see some uh, differences later on. So I guess content is the average as it is around 50%. So if your approval goes down, your uh, population growth will go down. So yeah, those are all stuff that you need to look out for to balance. But yeah, we still haven't done any research, so I'm thinking, so <laughs> let's just get the plasma fuel cells because it's the only one that I'm uh, totally sure of that I want. Right, well anyway, I guess I'll be ending the episode right here. So yeah, I think things are going rather well and it's also going a bit faster than in the first playthrough because now I know what to do and I guess that's very good. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.